Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 23rd T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. This is the third and I guess final wall of science week that I've been focusing on uh, working on this artificial life research paper to be sending off to the conference that'll be happening in the UK this summer. Uh, uh, and so I haven't been talking about the stuff that I've been working on mostly, which I don't like because I've been trying to be really <laughs> as as transparent as I, as I possibly can, even sort of beyond what's comfortable sometimes, uh, just so to share the process. I mean, whatever it is of, of trying to build this thing to uh, demonstrate a way to compute and to maybe change the world a little bit, a lot, however it works out. Uh, so hopefully uh, next week we'll get, we'll get back to uh, more uh, normal forms uh, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, um, 2013 Tuesday, that, that means in three more weeks, that will be the 26th episode. That's half a year just since I've been talking to y'all. Uh, and it, it's been quite a ride so far. I would really like it. It wouldn't it be nice if by half a year since the T2 tile project has been in existence, we could say the tiles are being manufactured. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I think it's it's more possible than any previous goal that I've set and failed at. Uh, whether it could actually happen, I don't know. We'll see. Today, um, I'm going to talk more about uh, 3D printing stuff because that's been going on uh, one way or another, both the plot and the printing, uh, uh, continuously in the background. In fact, it's going on continuously in the background now. You may hear it singing every so often, uh, uh, and a little bit about the bill of materials stuff, and then uh, this will probably be another short one. We'll see how it goes. I got some feedback that the bill of materials is big old boring. On the one hand, you know, it is what it is. It's like it's not like we have a showrunner. It's not like we have a writing room that says, you know, what, what's going to be the interesting bit and what isn't. It's just this is the plot, you know, this is what we've got. Um, try to go through it as quick as I can. Uh, um, and, you know, it, this is a, is a kind of weird, you know, they talk about police procedurals and legal procedurals and TV shows and stuff. So this is, this is some kind of weird research engineering activism procedural. So it's kind of like whatever the plot is, is what's the plot. But of course, the point of the writing is to actually make it be interesting. All right. Well, anyway, so in the bill of materials, uh, we had been working on getting rid of the last bits of red uh, uh, from the spreadsheet. Uh, these here, uh, the the hex nuts. These were the nuts from Dubai that we actually got in. Uh, um, so those are set. And what's remaining is uh, uh, just regular screws, little M3 screws to connect to the standoffs to attach boards to things and so forth. I uh, ordered a bunch of sa a sample set of those, a pack of a hundred. Uh, we'll I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, then J7, which is the header for the displays to connect the displays to the thing. J9, which is for the debug connection, which is not that important until you need it, and that's <laughs> really important. And then P8 and P9, which are these forever aggravating uh, connectors for the beagle bone itself. So uh, as of now, oh yeah, and so I'd finally pulled the trigger uh, last week on trying to get the P8s and the P9s. Instead of going to uh, DigiKey, I put an order for DigiKey for J7 and J9, uh, but for P8 and P9, I just tried to go back to AliExpress to pay $86 instead of 280 and change. Uh, uh, we'll see how that went uh, today as well. All right, so um, I ordered some of these uh, screws from this company, Granger, that I found uh, that has a, 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 a store in Albuquerque, a warehouse in Albuquerque. I'd never heard of these guys. They're industrial supply mostly, but they have all kinds of stuff. Uh, and I got the socket cap screws from sample socket cap screws from uh, a while ago. I ordered some of the, uh, little of these uh, M3 screws. They came in, uh, so I went to get them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is what the place looks like, uh, the, and uh, this is what I look like at Granger. Whoops, uh, uh, this is what I look at, uh, at Granger. Here we are, 
And once again, I didn't take any pictures inside, although I wasn't actually as threatened by the 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 guys, the uh, the repairmen, and the, the the workers and stuff. There's always people there uh, who are buying parts or trying to get replacement parts for some incredibly crazy gizmo, and they're generally guys. They're generally pretty grizzled and been seen a lot of that outdoors. And I don't know if they really know what to make of me, but no one's been disrespectful, and it, it's always been fine. And in fact, I even had some chit chat about what the heck is the part that you're trying to do and he's like oh it's a pneumatic hammer or shifter connector inverter or something whatever so that was fine and i got the uh these uh m3 five millimeter screws they are they're they're cheesehead screws uh, uh <laughs> which uh i think is because if you look at them uh you can see that they they actually have a little bit of well i got it on the next picture uh, um so uh here here's one of the screws again sorry about the focus uh, uh on the uh actual board screwing down into a standoff as a test uh by comparison though here is one of the screws that i had just gotten from a kit of standoffs and so forth and i actually think i like the littler one bigger i mean this this one you can still see a little bit of the grounding ring around this thing whereas in the 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 cheese head thing it's actually uh, the head is bigger not just thicker but even bigger around than i kind of was expecting so i got the cheese head ones because that's all that granger had in the m3 and the five millimeter rather than the pan head which is lower and and uh, looking at it end on you can see the difference there's the cheese head and i think it's called a cheese head because it looks like an entire wheel of cheese if you're looking at it through a very large magnifying glass uh, uh back when people knew what wheels of cheese looked like uh, um and and versus the uh where is the other one versus the pan head which is quite a bit lower and i think i need the pan head ones because this thing is going right underneath it's going on the beagle bone and and the a display is going to be right on top of it there's not a lot of clearance there so i think probably Probably these cheese head screws are not going to work, but you know, that was six bucks or whatever. So, uh, um, not quite solved there. Once again, these screws are not necessary to pull the trigger for ETS. So these are not on the absolute critical path anyway. All right. Uh, on the other hand, the J7 and J9, which I ordered from DigiKey, they are on the critical path. They were scheduled to show up on Friday, and sure enough, they did. Here's our DigiKey package, uh, uh, and here they are. Um, and I've marked them uh, so that uh, we can tell what they're, they're, the inner packs really kind of need to be marked as well. These are the 2x13 connectors for the display. These are the 1x6 connectors uh, uh, for the debug UART. Somebody, I'm sorry, I don't remember the handle, uh, was commenting on the YouTube channel that, you know, you can make these yourself. You buy big, long strips and, and clip them off to whatever length you need. And I do know that. And in fact, if one looks at the video where I was assembling a board by hand a long time ago, it seems you can actually see me cutting some of them by hand. The thing is, is that, you know, if I'm going to be asking the ETS guys to do it, they're going to be cutting them by hand at $15 an hour. And they just look better. Uh, if you get them uh, stamped out actually you know at whatever length they're supposed to be so i kind of wanted to get the official ones rather than telling the ets guys hey just uh, chop off however much you need so we got them uh, um and here's the uh here's the one by six in the j9 thing uh, they're all nice and gleaming these these pins are, are are bronze just sort of mix of metals but they actually have actual gold flash an incredibly thin layer of gold over the entire thing which is why they're so gleaming and it makes them conduct electricity very nicely is it super overkill the general idea is if you're going to ha be having a connection that you're making and breaking a lot you want to have uh something that's like gold it could even be thicker gold rather than gold flash but it's a lot more expensive uh, um so that you don't get corrosion and so you know we got the good stuff so there's the one by six here's the two by 13 for the uh for the display same thing gold flash over the whole thing we are done j7 j9 check uh, uh on the other hand uh, um i ordered the so the the lot at at uh aliexpress was a single lot for 42 43 bucks was 200 of these things of the p8p9 we need two of them so 200 would do 100 tiles so i ordered two lots to have enough for 200 tiles that's the 85 bucks uh and the order went nowhere it didn't ship on the first day it didn't ship on the second day it didn't ship on the fifth day 
Uh, um, so, you know, of course I was, you know, rechecking and, you know, if, if they don't ship within something like seven business days or whatever it is, it, the order automatically cancels. And I'm like, well, geez, you know, these guys had pretty good scores as far as what people were saying about their shipping speed, what's going on. Uh, so I reloaded the next day and, you know, all right, now it's two days and it still isn't going. So... So yesterday, I you know, I, I put, is this order going to ship today? Should I go ahead and cancel it, uh, uh, and so forth? You know, just a little nudge. At that point, I thought I actually could just cancel it unilaterally, but it turns out since I've put the money into escrow or paid them or whatever it is, actually, apparently, I can't cancel it unless the seller agrees. So I'm not exactly sure what my rights were. I thought I could just because there's a button that says cancel, but actually, it's a button that says request cancellation. So I went ahead and did that. Uh, uh, five hours later, <laughs> not, not, now it's shipped. Uh, um, and now we've gone from a waiting shipment to a waiting delivery. Your order will be closed in 38 days. Nuh uh, no, that's just the outside limit for when AliExpress says the thing is blown. You know, the order it was 23 days, is what the order said. So we shall see. Um, I'm, I'm very afraid because I didn't spring for the super expensive DHL shipping and everything. We'll see what happens. All right. So that's it for the bill of materials. Let's talk about 3D printing. Uh, uh, you will recall that uh, when last we were talking about this, I had finally managed to figure out that my problem was not down in the nozzle of the extruder, but way up at the top because I'd gotten a, the end piece of the thing that hadn't gotten backed out by the filament sensor, which didn't seem to sense, and so on. And I got this thing out and so forth. For a while after that, things were good. Not so great since then. Who's Prusari now? All right, so here it is. So we, we got the thing fixed, and then we were printing these great four up, four cases at a time. Took like 10 hours. Start one before you go to bed. Uh, uh, that's there so around noon the next day, whatever it is. Uh, um, but this didn't last too long. I started getting this Ur Min Temp bed. Uh, and uh, that spoiled the print. And this is my out output, uh, my little trash recycle. Ha ha, PLA doesn't really recycle very well. Uh, so I just sort of collect it up and say, I don't know what we're doing with it. Lots of things that look like case tops. Why? Because they were failed prints. And most, well, many of these anyway, were for this error min temp bed, which apparently means that the uh, bed of the printer, uh, uh, the, the stuff that you print on, uh, look to be uh, zero temperature or too low. And I started to realize that when the min temp bed error would occur, Typically, it was in the back left corner of the print bed, uh, and it did seem to be a pattern there. It wasn't all the same the same number of layers in. This is, I don't know, maybe 20 layers in or 10, something like that. Uh, that would vary, but it was pretty much in that corner, and I thought that was a clue. I thought, you know, the, the cable bundle coming off the extruder and the cable bundle coming off of the, the bed, in fact, kind of run into each other and push each other back and forth, especially when the extruder is back in that corner and it seemed likely that you know there's a flaky connection a flaky wire from the temperature sensor in the bed to the logic inside the printer and it's triggering this min temp error <sighs> googled it other folks have seen it uh, um, uh, nothing really all that uh, uh, can uh, you know slam dunk description like what I had all, although similar stuff I was sort of su su surprised at first and then in a way kind of relieved that you know min temp bed errors aren't unique to the Prusa printer because it's using this uh, uh, Marlin based a, a code based for driving the printer that that other 3D printers use as well so other folks uh, the Creality people well, they can get min temp errors to mid min bed min temp bed errors. So 
Prusa 3D says, want to ask something? You can ask us anything. They have a thing. Uh, uh, so I contacted them and, and I got absolutely nothing. I didn't even, I sort of expected to get an email CC of the message that I typed into their web uh, uh, browser. So I didn't actually ca catch a copy of the thing. So I was asking them, what did I do about this error min temp bed error? I bought the thing pre-assembled. I got it, but I bought it through UNM and so on and so forth. Nothing. Day after day after day and nothing. Uh, eventually, uh, I sent a follow-up. I contacted you last week about her min temp bed. I'm like, okay, there, do you need details on the printer and so forth? And still, nothing. Uh, um, so, you know, I, I admit that my first message was a little bit snarky. Uh, uh, because I was like, you know, this is an assembled printer. I bought it as an assembled printer. I really don't want to have to learn how to disassemble the whole thing in order to fix it. What should I do? I sort of did expect to hear something so far, nothing at all. Uh, uh, and so I'd given them some more, uh, information about when I got it in particular, I rechecked and it was shipped in May and, uh, we're supposed to have, uh, a, uh, a one year warranty for the rest of the world when you purchase a fully assembled printer. So this thing is like covered, uh, uh, you know, our, our support team is ready to assist you with any issues that may appear. Not so much, not so much. At this point, the fact that I can't actually hear from Prusa is kind of bugging me a little bit more than, okay, the thing is sort of falling apart. I mean, I've, I've been using it quite a bit, but I expected that there would be some <laughs> actual support. So that's kind of a bummer, uh, um, but we'll see what's going on. So in the meantime, since it seemed like it was the back left corner that was sensitive to getting these min temp bed errors, I took the, you know, doctor, it hurts when I do this approach to dealing with it. And uh, I did this. Uh, <laughs> I made a version that only has three up and avoids the back left corner. And this actually has been working quite well. And I've been printing threes. Uh, um, and I got far enough, in fact, that I was getting to the bottom of the next reel of Prusament Galaxy Black. I'm not using crap filament here. I'm using official company store stuff. Uh, I was way too terrified to go ahead and see if it was going to work automatically. Uh, but I went and I got my next roll of uh, the Galaxy Black PLA and pulled it out, got it ready. The thing got lower and then I just did it by hand. I paused the print, unloaded the filament, pressed the knob. Uh, pulled the roll off, put the new roll on with its whole special laser printed stuff so that you can track its vintage just like a, a championship horse. Uh, uh, and it, it does look nice. It wasn't a, as perfectly flat a wind as my first reel was. Load the filament, got extrusion going. Uh, yes, it's correct. And back in business. So I've been collecting up uh, uh, these things in boxes. And that would have been fine, but no, that was just the next issue. Then I started, well, okay, yeah, every so often I would get a bad first layer, but okay, it seems like the calibration shifts or whatever, uh, uh, but I, I've gotten used to that, I check it, uh, but this was not uh, the same old thing. Now I got print fan error, uh, uh, like that. Go Google that. Well, you know, the print is, the fan is blocked. No, it wasn't blocked. Uh, it might be if you used a, a, a completely not working. No, it appears to be working and so forth. If you replace the fan with something that doesn't support RPM sensing, you can turn off the monitoring and blah, 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 blah. And if it stops working, and again, this looks like another flaky connection. So once again, it's damn the torpedoes. Uh, went into the settings mode, check fans on. No, I turned it off. Uh, uh, and now we're back in business and the fan is still working. So bottom line, uh, um, We're generating these things. This is 36 cases. That's uh, almost two power zones right there. We've got uh, another one like that pretty well going. We'll see if the thing holds together long enough to get there. All right. So uh, we're out of time. <sighs> the paper is going to ship this week. Thanks, everybody, <laughs> for asking me why aren't I writing when I was out at, out at there. We did get the... Uh, um, the one week extension, uh, um, which I've been counting on that's this week. And it's until the end of this week. Now, if there might be a couple of secret extra days to work on it a little more over the weekend, we'll see if there is, I will be doing so. Uh, uh, and that's that. 
the next update will be out a week from today. Uh, happy birthday to my sister. Uh, uh, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.